College of Public Affairs and Development of the University of the Philippines Los Baños is a premier academic institution committed to the study of development issues, institutions, and communities. Created on January 29, 1998, CPAF upholds the value of transdisciplinary and participatory approaches in honing distinctive excellence in development studies and governance. With its one faculty, one college structure, the College of Public Affairs and Development aims to develop human and institutional capacities through its instruction, research, and public service programs in the following areas. Development policy, governance, and community and rural development. Serving as the instruction unit of CIPAF, the Institute for Governance and Rural Development, or IGRD, houses all faculty members and serves as home to all academic programs of the college. Under the IGRD, CPAF offers graduate degree programs that equip students with the knowledge and skills needed to become competent, and proficient development practitioners, leaders, and managers, administrators, educators, policymakers, and researchers. These degree programs include Master in Public Affairs, Master in Development Management and Governance or DMG, Master of Science in DMG and MS and Doctor of Philosophy in Community Development and in Extension Education. CPAF also offers the PhD in Development Studies or DVST, a cross-disciplinary program. The major streams of this program include Agrarian and Rural Development Studies, Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Security, Education and Development, Natural Resource Management, and Population, Gender, and Development Studies. Moreover, the college offers undergraduate service courses in Education and Agrarian Studies. Students enrolled in these courses are mostly taking up BS Math and Science Teaching, BS Human Ecology, BS Development Communication, and BS Economics. With students coming from diverse national and cultural backgrounds, graduate education at CPAF fosters a learning environment that encourages students to become co-creators of knowledge through research, program, and project evaluation seminars, workshops, community planning, and other course requirements. Students' learning and knowledge sharing are also extended to local communities and institutions. The different organizations in CPAF also offer opportunities for students to build continuing personal and professional camaraderie even beyond their student life. The CPAF Graduate Students Association is the official student organization of the college. Meanwhile, the CPAF Alumni Association is the organization that keeps students connected after their graduation. Together with instruction, research and public service are the key functions of CPAF. The college has two research centers. The Community Innovation Studies Center, or CISC, and the Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies, or CSPPS. 
the CISC conducts integrative community development studies in the areas of community education, development pathways of communities in transition, and community-based strategies for sustainable development. On the other hand, the CSPPS serves as the policy and advocacy unit of the college that centers on social policy and institutions, water and development, and agricultural policy and sustainability. Policy seminars are also conducted regularly to bring timely and relevant information closer to various sectors of the society. Through its research programs and projects, the two centers have been working with communities, local government units, government agencies, non-profit organizations, and the academe toward achieving the common goal of developing the potentials and capacities of people and institutions. Research outputs are published in various publications and presented in local and international academic gatherings. The Knowledge Management Office produces a refereed journal, the Journal of Public Affairs, a newsletter, CPAF Updates, and a magazine, CPAF In Focus, which are all available online. Through print and online media, the college was able to disseminate research outputs and relevant college activities. The KMO also manages the college library and its computer laboratory. Together with its students, faculty and staff, alumni, and institutional partners, CPAV is committed in pursuing future-proof systems in instruction, research, extension, and policy advocacy with distinctive excellence in development studies and governance for nation building and inclusive development. Good morning again, everyone. Thank you for sticking with us. Hope you are able to energize during the short break. Let's proceed now to the second part of the program. Today, we will be launching three books that are products of the R&D activities of our colleagues at CPAF. So the first book came from the project titled Production and Market Systems of Organic Agricultural Inputs in Major Organic Rice and Vegetable Producing Provinces in the Philippines. The title of the book is Organic Agricultural Inputs, Input Systems in the Philippines, The Case of Rice and Vegetables 2021. To discuss further the details about the first book, I'll now call Ms. Macrina G. O'Malley, University Researcher from CSPPS IPAF. Ms. O'Malley? Thank you, Gwen. On behalf of the study team, I'm, I wish to greet all of you a pleasant morning. Okay, uh, as a background, this book is one of the outputs of the DA Bar funded research project entitled Production and Market Systems of Organic Agriculture Inputs in Major Organic Rice and Vegetable Producing Provinces in the Philippines. Its general objective is to come up with an industry profile, gathering past and current state of organic agricultural input industry, including the volume of production and marketing by type of organic input, investments made such as capitalization, facilities, infrastructure, and the problems encountered. For organic agriculture inputs like planting materials, pest management, and organic fertilizers. The project has four studies or all in all. One is the production of organic agriculture inputs. 
Second is the market system study for organic agriculture inputs. Third is the certification, registration, packaging, and labeling of organic agriculture inputs. And lastly, utilization of organic agricultural inputs. The book is authored by 10 CIPAF staff, headed by our project leader, Dr. Miriam R. Nguyen. Uh, among the co-authors are Ms. Dulce Elasigi, Ms. Agnes Chuponko, Ms. Maria Francesca Otan, Ms. Maria Cristina A. Alvarez, Ms. Joanne Alvarez, Roxanne A. Banalo, Florita P. Raneses, Rona Tea T. Riodica, and yours truly. This book has six chapters all in all. The first chapter is an overview of the findings. You can also find also the rationale, the objectives, the methodology, and conceptual framework of the book. In chapter two, uh, the challenges, the, the challenges and the status in the production of organic agriculture inputs can be found. While in chapter three, it discusses the policies and implementation of organic agriculture input certification, registration, including packaging and labelings. While chapter four presents the marketing aspect and issues of organic agricultural inputs, chapter five is about the utilization of organic agriculture agricultural inputs by the organic farmers. And finally, chapter six is a summary and recommendations necessary to improve the organic agriculture industry and the organic industry as a whole. Uh, to avail of the book, to avail of the book, uh, it is, um, it is. Uh, it, it can be found uh, in CIPAP, in DA Bar, and the National Library. Uh, but it is only on limited copies. So, if you would like to have a copy of the book, we have an e-copy of it in CIPAP. You can email Miss Francesca Tan or Miss Cristina Alvarez. So, uh, yun lang po. Maraming salamat at isang mapagpalang araw sa ating lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amali. And now, let's call on Director Blanquita R. Pantoja, Director and University Researcher from CISCC PATH, to introduce to us the second and third book. The second and third book came from the project titled Policy Support to the Organic Chicken and Organic Swine Industry in Selected Areas, Philippines. The titles of the books are Policy Support to Organic Agriculture in the Philippines Chicken Industry 2021 and Policy Support to Organic Agriculture in the Philippines Swine industry. Director Thank Pantoja. You, yeah. Thank you, Gwen. Good day to everyone. This morning, I will be speaking on the two books that Gwen had already identified. Uh, and just like uh, the organic book that uh, Maren discussed earlier, this book also came out uh, in 20, 2021. Um, as Gwen mentioned a little earlier, this is really the two books are outputs of the DA Bar funded research project entitled Policy Support to the Organic Chicken and Organic Swine Industry in Selected Philippines. The general objective of the project was to identify the various policies that would support the adoption of organic farm production technologies and consumption of organic products in the chicken and swine sector. We undertook uh, four studies specifically for this project, uh, and these are policy support to production of organic chicken and organic swine, policy support to the market system for organic chicken and organic swine. The third one is consumer demand for organic chicken and organic swine products. And lastly, IEC and operational policies in the promotion of organic chicken and swine. Uh, we undertook the data gathering uh, before, prior to the pandemic. So we were lucky to have at least a face-to-face -face, um, data gathering, which was done through social economic surveys, key informant interviews, and focus group discussions. Study sites differed in the two commodities. For organic chicken, 
the research team went to Bohol, Cebu, Iloilo, and Negros Occidental. Benguet, Marinduque, and Quezon were the sites for organic swine. Next slide, please. So uh, the book on policy support to organic agriculture in the Philippines chicken industry was um, authored by nine CIPA constituents. Um, as you can see in your screen, uh, we have here uh, Ms. Agnes Chupunko, Mir Dr. Miriam Nguyen, Dr. Jane Reyes. Uh, again, we have Ms. Macrinas G. Umali and uh, Therese R. Oldiga. Dr. Eileen Lorena M. Mamino, uh, our research assistant, project research assistant, Princess Diane M. Lavarnes, and uh, Junelda P. Kosef, and of course, yours truly. We have, uh, the book contains seven major chapters. The first is on the policy support to the organic chicken industry in selected areas, Philippines, an overview. It discusses the rationale, objectives, and conceptual framework of the book and provides an overview of the organic chicken industry. The second chapter analyzes the management practices, issues, and concerns on organic chicken uh, production, including certification and labeling. Chapter three, which is on policy support to the market system, provides information on the market structure, market conduct, and market performance of the organic chicken industry. Chapter four discusses the consumption demand for organic chicken, touching on the knowledge, attitudes, practices, perceptions, and arguments of consumers and their willingness to pay. Uh, chapter 5, Information, Education, and Communication and Operational Policies in the, in the Promotion of Organic Chicken assesses the IEC activities and operational policies in the promotion of organic chicken by the industry's stakeholders. Uh, chapter 6 provides the summary of the four components and uh, the conclusions uh, that we arrived at. And then last chapter uh, enumerates recommendations to sustain and or enhance organic chicken production and marketing systems, as well as increase awareness and demand. So in case you are interested, the book is available at CIPAF and also will be available soon at the ABAR and the National Library of the Philippines. Uh, we just got our hard copy, uh, I think, a week ago. So we have not <laughs> made a delivery to the A-Bar and to the National Library. Um, the ISBN is also indicated here in the slide set. So for the policy support to organic agriculture in the Philippine swine industry, um, we have eight authors, and uh, you can just refer to your slide set who are the eight authors. Next slide, please. I, what happened? Parang naputol yung slide, ano? Anyway, um, um, the major chapters and content of uh, the organic swine book basically follows that of the organic chicken book. So um, the flow of, of course, it uh, focuses on another commodity, uh, which is organic swine. But um, I would not go into much details given that the flow of discussion of the two books are basically the same. Uh, uh, on your screen is the seven major chapters of uh, the book on the uh, on organic swine. And again, in case you are interested, the book is available at CIPAF 
and will be available at BA Bar in the National Library of the Philippines. Uh, ISBN again is indicated in the slide, Seth. And of course, lastly, I would like to thank those who made these outputs possible. To our respondents, the farmers, traders, and consumers who share their knowledge as our survey respondents, the provincial and municipal local governments of Cebu, Bohol, Iloilo, Negros Occidental, Benguet, Marinduque, and Quezon for their assistance. The key informants, state universities and colleges, and other government agencies such as the Agricultural Training Institute, Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standards, Bureau of Animal Industry, and the National Organic Agriculture Board. And lastly, of course, we would like to thank our funding agency, BA Bar, who has always supported um, the organic agriculture researches that are being done at proposed and being done by CIPAF. With this, um, uh, DA Bar is here to join us today and representing Director Junel B. Soriano is the Knowledge Management and Information Systems Division Head, Ms. Salvacion M. Ritual. May I now call on Ms. Ritual for the formal launch of the three books. UPLB College of Public Affairs and Development Dean, Dr. Ruena D.T. Bacomis, CIPAP Institute for Governance and Rural Development Director, Dr. Emily P. Serrano, other distinguished guests and colleagues, good morning. We at the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, extend our warmest congratulations to the 24th founding anniversary of the College of Public Affairs and Development. CIPAP has been one of the Bureau's partners as well as the agriculture sector's staunch supporter. As a premier academic institution with distinctive excellence in development studies and governance, CIPAF conducted its research and extension programs and projects in support of national development goals in the agriculture sector. This morning, we will be launching three books that CIPAF has produced as a result of research funded by DA Bar. Number one is the Organic Agriculture Input System in the Philippines, the Case of Rice and Vegetables. Number two is on policy support to organic agriculture in the Philippines, chicken industry, and policy support to organic agriculture in the Philippines, swine industry. The first book features a profile of the organic input industry, specifically for rice and vegetables in selected areas in the country, as well as policy recommendations to improve the production marketing and utilization of organic agricultural inputs. It is one of the outputs of the project titled Production and Market Systems of Organic Agricultural Inputs in Major Rice and Vegetable Producing Provinces in the Philippines led by the retired university researcher Dr. Miriam R. Nguyen. The second and third books focus on the production, marketing, and consumption of organic chicken and swine in their corresponding policy concerns that can be done. Both books are part of the outputs produced through the project titled Policy Support to the Organic Chicken and Organic Swine Industry in Selected Areas, Philippines, led by Community Innovation Studies Center Director and University Researcher Blanquita R. Pantoja and Retired University Researcher Agnes R. Chupunco. When the government institutionalized its support to organic agriculture more than a decade ago, through the promulgation of the Republic Act 10068, otherwise known as the Organic Agriculture Act of 2010, various programs, projects, and activities have been undertaken to promote organic farming. Crucial to this endeavor is understanding the shift from conventional to organic farming as well as its implications to the sector. Hence, 
policy researches like these two projects are important and necessary. When our director, Dr. Chunel B. Soriano, took office in November 2021, he put forward the research to policy for development and extension approach as an overarching mechanism to achieve the Bureau's goal. Through this approach, research-generated technologies are not only upscaled and upscaled to reach more farmers and fishers, but also translated into policies that would include and hopefully institutionalize these changes in the development plans of the sector. We hope that these books will reach policy makers, government planners, national and local leaders, and other stakeholders who have the capacity to forward change in the agri-fisheries sector. Before I end this, let me congratulate Dr. Miriam R. Nguyen, Blanquita R. Pantoja, and Agnes Archipunko for spearheading the projects from which these books have been written. Congratulations also to the other authors of these books. Your knowledge, wisdom, and dedication are highly appreciated. May you continue to work hard towards guiding the agriculture industry for the benefit of our farmers and fisher folk. Again, happy 24th founding anniversary to the College of Public Affairs and Development. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ms. Selva Shuan Ritual, and of course, thank you, Do Director Blanquita Pantoja. We hope that this outputs of our fellow researchers can be utilized by different stakeholders. Thank you very much. So once again, thank you to our fellow staff for, produ for introducing CPAP's new knowledge products. And now let's proceed to the third part of the program, which is the introduction of the upcoming project from the Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies, which is the establishment of the Development Innovation and Policy Laboratory, or the Deep Lab. To explain further what is the Deep Lab, may we call on Director Eileen V. Lapitan, the project leader and current director of CSPPS. Director Lapitan. Okay, so uh, again, good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to share with you uh, that we have just started the implementation of uh, the DIP Lab, uh, which is a, uh, a new, it's an innovation that uh, we are launching here at CIPAF. And I would, uh, I would like to say in UPLB and perhaps uh, uh, in, in our country. Um, so um, we are uh, very grateful to the support of um, uh, Sir Picard, uh, in uh, putting up uh, uh, the the concept as well as for uh, IDD, um, are uh, for uh, the support in uh, providing the uh, the physical facilities and other support uh, for uh, for the purposes of uh, of this laboratory. Uh, so we have great um, we have great plans and great aspirations for the policy lab because we hope that. Um, through this project, which is uh, going to run for two years, we will um, uh, develop a hub, a, a hub that will be here for a long time uh, for capacity building and uh, public engagement activities, as well as delivery of technical advisory services in support of inclusive evidence-based policy analysis and formulation. So we're very excited about this and um, we also would like to thank the Office of the Chancellor for the uh, for providing a part of the Future Proofing Fund in um, for the development of a database of policies uh, that uh, we will uh, put up uh, on our first two years uh, first two years of the lab. Um, the Office of the Chancellor has provided a total of one million uh, for the development of this. Uh, database for policy-related knowledge products. Also part of um, the activities of the laboratory would be the delivery of three learning courses um, for um, our partners. So we, have, uh, we are working towards the development of learning modules 
on policy analysis, strategic planning, and results-based uh, monitoring and evaluation. So we're very excited about that. We are also um, starting works toward the building of a physical facility that houses its various um, our various um, collaborative learning resources and activities um, uh, within the design. So this facility will be used in hopefully soon face-to-face -face, um, activities uh, and uh, perhaps maybe in the next few months some virtual uh, extension activities also. Um, it will serve as a uh, neutral ground where experts from the academe and the uh, different sectors, policy decision makers, community organizations and other stakeholders can come together and um, co-create co-design uh, policy innovations. Um, you know, because we are housed in uh, the College of Public Affairs and Development, which is also in the business of, um, uh, of course, a course delivery, program delivery, um, we also intend to use the lab for service learning activities. So here, uh, I hope that uh, our friends, friends of CPAF and CSPPS, um, could look forward to um, uh, policy hackathon events down the road and um, policy roundtable discussions specific to the um, issue areas uh, pertaining to agriculture and natural resources development. Uh, we're also um, planning on launching some role-playing simulation games. And uh, as you can see, these are activities that we hope uh, to do uh, in support of our uh, graduate student learning here at the College of Public Affairs and Development. We have a lot in store for our uh, for everyone for uh, for our stakeholders in the university and outside the university. In particular, because we are um, in a close partnership with DOST Picard, um, we will be hosting um, also virtual and uh, small face-to-face -face workshops for uh, certain projects that were funded. Um, by uh, by the agency. So, for example, um, we are already targeting um, some of those activities um, under uh, in support of the watershed policy project. Um, and of course, we have um, some projects that are getting into um, getting completed very soon, like the small islands uh, uh, development project, uh, which I am leading. And uh, we're also intending to uh, provide um, the same services to the newly approved uh, Picard funded uh, projects like uh, the decision support system study being um, led by Dr. Uh, Rowena Bakongis. Um, so one other thing that we want to emphasize in the development of the DIP lab is uh, that we want to make sure that we serve the purpose of linking evidence with decision making and um, making sure also that we are able to um, do this uh, by uh, producing laymanized uh, information products uh, for use of um, all consumers of policy information. So um, we are uh, intending to, um, one, one thing that you could look forward to this year is um, the production of streamcasts or podcasts that will um, help uh, deliver um, uh, concepts and uh, learnings, insights from projects that have been completed um, so that uh, this, th these could inform also the policy discourse uh, on different issues concerning agriculture and natural resource um, development. So, you know, we also, we uh, actually produced a, a short clip uh, for, uh, to, to give you some more introduction about what the, um, what the DIP Lab is all about. And uh, I hope that uh, when we uh, play it here, um, you'll get excited. So, um, so that's um, what I want to share for now. And uh, if you have questions, I hope that we could have a little bit of discussion about what DIP Lab uh, intends to do in the coming two years. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Over to you, Gwen. Thank you, Director Lapita. And we will now be showing the audiovisual audio presentation for the Deep Lab. As part 
part of our 24th anniversary celebration, we are proud to introduce the latest innovation from the College of Public Affairs and Development, the DIP Lab, or the Development Innovation and Policy Laboratory, with Dr. Eileen V. Lapitan at the helm. We enjoin everyone to collaborate with us as we develop capacities on governance and development, promote public engagement activities, and deliver technical advisory services in support of an inclusive and evidence-based policy analysis and formulation. Dear friends and colleagues from the College of Public Affairs and Development, please accept my warmest congratulations on your 24th founding anniversary. I remember that time in the mid-90s. I had just returned from graduate studies, and from that time on, SIPAF continues to grow. Here at the Office of the Vice-Chancellor for Research and Extension, we commit our support to your endeavors. Let me also take this opportunity to thank Dean Bakongis for leading the group that crafted UPLB's research and extension agenda, which we call the UPLB Agora. In particular, as we pioneer future communities and institutions as one of the four focus areas of UPLB Agora. This is why I am pleased to hear that CPAP's Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies is launching the Development Innovation Policy Laboratory on your anniversary. The DIP Lab will be the first of its kind to host policy-related research, data, and activities. We foresee the DIP Lab to be instrumental in bridging the gap between research and policy advocacy in the AANR sector down to the community level. I cannot wait to see the DIP Lab in the forefront of policy research, analysis, and advocacy. Once again, congratulations. I would like to congratulate the College of Public Affairs and uh, Development for another milestone on your 24th anniversary, the launching of the Development Innovation Policy Laboratory, or Deep Lab, at the Center for Strategic Planning and uh, Policy Studies. The Deep Lab is touted to be the first of its kind in the country. It shall mirror our university's ability and focus toward a more collaborative approach to data gathering, analysis, and interpretation of policy-related research in agriculture and natural resources. This facility is going to boost our new research and extension agenda called the UPLB Agora, or Accelerated Growth Through One Research and Extension in Action. I am hopeful that the Deep Lab could help address the policy-related concerns of UPLB Agora's four pillars on food security and sovereignty, on resilience and sustainability, one health, and future communities and institutions. I would like to thank the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic, and Natural Resources Research and Development for supporting the establishment of this laboratory. May this kind of effort help cascade 
a more coherent policy stream down to the community level. May your work lead to enduring results that will enhance the development of our agriculture and natural resources sectors and of our communities. Once again, congratulations UPLB CPAF and uh, PICARD. Thank you and stay safe. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Happy 24th anniversary to CPAF and congratulations on the launching of the Development Innovations Laboratory. The Institution Development Division of the DOSD Picard is one with you in your journey to strengthen policy advocacy in the regions. This would require more than just a facility, but also the technical know-how to properly address the various concerns and the differences in available resources both human and otherwise, at the regional level. Congratulations, and may the deep love help all of us serve the people. Happy 24th uh, anniversary to CPAF. We at Picard, especially at the Socioeconomics uh, Research Division, or CERD, and the Institution Development Division, or, or IDD, have been working in tandem towards the fruition of the implementation of the Development Innovation Policy Laboratory or the DIP Lab House at CIPAP. I would like to commend the efforts of uh, Dr. Eileen V. Lapitan, the project leader of the DIP Lab. We hope that even with the looming pandemic over our heads, we would still be able to effectively work on our goal of strengthening policy advocacy in the region. Thank you. Congratulations to CIPAP on your 24th anniversary. CIPAP is one of the reliable institutional partners of DOSTP Card in research and policy development in the AANR sector. It makes us proud to have partnered with CIPAP in launching the Development Innovation Policy Laboratory aimed at building capacities in policy advocacy and communication in the regions. Together, we will work towards a vibrant and robust AANR sector that is technologically advanced, productive, sustainable, and future-proof. A whole systems approach in policy and governance that encompasses cooperation, collaboration, and co-learning. Again, Congratulations to CIPAP and CSBPS. Mabuhay! Policymakers and development practitioners rely on objective and meaningful interpretations of evidence to arrive at actionable solutions to challenges faced by communities. Research results play a big role in this process, but in most instances, they do not speak for themselves. The Development Innovations and Policy Laboratory at the College of Public Affairs and Development aims to bridge this gap between research and policy or decision making. In an attempt to bring research evidence to the policymakers and the public, several models have been used, and among these are policy laboratories. Policy laboratories or policy innovation laboratories are an innovative way of bringing together and encouraging collaboration between and among academics and policymakers. For years, they have been instrumental in assisting governments in bringing research results closer to policymakers and in engaging the citizens to actively participate in any stage of the policymaking process. Various policy laboratories across the globe offer source of data or information and a physical space where dialogues and discourse could thrive. Universities like the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, University of Sydney, Brown University, Johns Hopkins University, and Duke University have been operating their own policy laboratories for years. And now, we are going to have our very own here at UP Los Banos. 
to development innovations and policy laboratory funded by DOSCP card with support from the UPLB Future Proofing Fund will focus on the agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector. Through the Deep Lab, we aim to enhance the capacities of producers and consumers of AANR research to transform sound evidence into innovative solutions for societal development. Specifically, it will offer the following. First is a relational database for policies in the AANR sector. We at the Deep Lab will design and develop a database for policy-related knowledge products or documents. Second is capacity building of stakeholders. CSPPS has been conducting various trainings related to policy analysis and strategic planning. We at the Deep Lab we will be offering improved learning modules to capacitate target participants from the academe, national government agencies, research and development institutions, local government units, and other groups. Third is a physical facility for collaborative learning and co-creation activities. We at the lab will initiate service learning activities where we are going to employ innovative strategies. To further help in linking evidence with decision-making, we will also be releasing policy communication products and other materials, such as various media contents. Lastly, the Deep Lab will initially offer support to DOSTP card-funded policy analysis and advocacy projects on watershed, lake governance, and Almasiga resin. With this, we hope for your continued support as we launch this momentous undertaking. Together, let us work towards our shared goal of improving public policy making. Again, we welcome you to Deep Lab. So we are almost at the end of our program. Thank you for staying with us up to this point. Please do not forget to fill up your evaluation form and you may scan the QR code or the link posted on the screen. and also in the comment section of our Facebook page. And to close this morning's program, we will now have the Director of the Institute for Governance and Rural Development, Dr. Evely P. Serrano. Dr. Serrano. Thank you very much, Gwen. All right. So through the years, the College of Public Affairs and Development has played a critical role in educating people and ultimately in forging leaders for institutional governance and development. Today's learning event is thus timely and relevant as we try to deepen our understanding of issues related to public service and governance. Issues that have an impact on our lives issues that have significant implications to national and human development, issues that we should be knowledgeable of as scholars and ambassadors of good governance and inclusive development. As mentioned by ASEC Pasaraba, the implementation of the Mandanas Garcia Supreme Court ruling and Executive Order Number 0138 on full devolution is a shared responsibility. And our part can start by electing the right leaders to lead us and to work with us. It makes great sense, therefore, what uh, Attorney Lina had said earlier. We need to make sure that our people are well informed about the devolution and as main stakeholders understand that we can be beneficiaries and victims of it. Thus, we need to elect local government leaders who are true servant leaders are competent and are God-fearing so that the devolution of services will be properly implemented. To our distinguished resource speakers, Asek Odilon Pasaraba and Attorney Joey Lina, thank you so much for sharing your, uh, with us your time, expertise, and wisdom. We have learned a lot from you. To our discussants, Dr. Vela Atienza and A. Prof. Mayo Grace Amit, Thank you for enlightening us further with your reflections and insights. To everyone who learned with us today, thank you for supporting the second installment of our anniversary celebration. Let us take into heart the lessons that we have learned today 
and be guided by them when we choose our local and national leaders in the um, coming elections. Meanwhile, let me take this opportunity to congratulate our colleagues on their recent publications that were launched today. Big congratulations also to our Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies on the official launch of their DIP Lab, and to our partner institutions who make uh, who helped make all these possible. We are very much grateful for your continued support. To end, as we celebrate our college anniversary, may we continue to take part in the realization of our anniversary theme. Let's aim to learn more and be engaged in issues that matter. So join us next Friday when we discuss the role of higher education in uh, uh, the role of higher education institutions that is in forging leaders. Again, thank you very much and magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ms. Gwen? Thank you, Dr. Serrano. And that's a wrap for the second part of the CPAF 24th anniversary celebration. We wish to see you again next week, February 11, for another webinar and the closing of the anniversary celebration. For those interested to join us next week, you can register for our upcoming event by clicking the link that was sent in our chat box and by scanning the QR code flashed on your screen. So for those who want to get a certificate of attendance, please answer the evaluation form. The link is found here. And you can also scan the QR code. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Again, this is Guinevere Madlang Bayan. We hope you enjoyed our program for today. See you next week, and may everyone be healthy and safe. God bless you all.